second webinar in the series of lectures that we have arranged to <clears throat> probe into the fallout because of the boredom which is affecting us all. It is having a very fatal effect on the mental well-being of the people. They are undergoing untold mental and physical crisis. The department has taken upon itself the onus of unraveling the myth, the mystery behind the traumatic experiences. And today, Dr. Ching is going to present her perspective of appreciating and tackling the problem. It's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Ching. She's a scholar whose central emphasis has been to unravel the mystery of the human mind from <laughs> Jungian perspective. She is a psychological analyst, but then principally she is a Jungian analyst. And her PhD thesis entitled Revelation of Religion, Archaic and Archetypal Hierophilin delineates how religion was originally revealed through the text in the form of myths, stories, fairy tales, Bible, etc. And how they elucidate our experiences of transformation. So today, she is going to discuss boredom and ourselves amidst the lockdown. So we all will benefit a lot from her scholarship. Now I'm requesting Dr. Ching to start it. But before that, I am handing over the stage to Dr. Garima, whose lecture, yesterday, yesterday's lecture, we all had seen it. We really enjoyed it. And now she will act as a moderator and manage the whole thing. Dr. Garima, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, introducing this session. So I won't take much time. Uh, this is the second in the series of the three webinars that we have scheduled. And um, so Ms. Ching, as you know, and if you've come in contact with her, you would know that she's a Jungian analytic psychologist. So I think we'll get a very different perspective from her on boredom. Uh, some very quick uh, rules for the session. So if you have any questions, I would request you to send them directly to me during the session so I can monitor all the questions and it doesn't disrupt the flow of the conversation that's ongoing. And please mute your mics uh, because you'll have a better acoustic experience. And uh, all the questions will be taken up in the end. In case the session gets disconnected, don't worry. You can rejoin using the same username and password. So uh, don't worry even if it gets disconnected. So I would now uh, like to invite Ms. Ching to take this take over the stage. Okay. Hi all. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, it was such a humbling experience. All right. Uh, let's get ahead with this because um, yeah, uh, I would like to start with a story. I hope I'm audible. All right. I, ho I would like to start it with a story. There is a story about a tree that's more than a hundred years old. It was huge and stood in the middle of the farm. Um, the owner of the farm came by and thought, what a useless tree. I'm going to get this cut by tomorrow. This tree doesn't bear me any fruit, neither is its bark or leaves of any use to me. And it's right in the middle of the farm <clears throat> where its shade is of no use to me or anyone. It's better to chop it off so I may at least use the soil and the wood at least as a firewood. So hello and welcome to our session on boredom and ourselves amidst the lockdown. I don't know if you have noticed, but the S in the term selves is a capital letter. Let's start with that. Uh, for many, the self mean simply our own self. And in some literature, the term uh, self is also identified with the ego self, while others identify with our own true, uh, true and real identity. There's a concept of the transcendent self. And then there's a difference between the I self and the me self. With so many notions, it's already somehow clear that there can be a various form of self. And this is where we'll start. 
each of us has uh, many selves. There's not just one you. There's not just one me. There can be many form of you. For example, um, in my case, I have a son and to him, sometimes I am the angry mother. Other times I'm the loving mom. I can be a playful mother or the lazy mom. On top of, on top of that, I am a working employee at an institution. I can be a hardworking employee or a rather lazy one. Hence, I am both a working person and a mother. I am also a wife, a daughter, a stranger for some, and I am the one who always buys apples and bananas from the, for the fruit seller near our place. So I have many different persona per se. And on top of that, I have layers and layers of persona. Uh, why am I calling it layers? Because most of the time when you get to know a person, it's like you are peeling off one thing at a time. and uh, in all honesty, that applies on getting to know yourself too. We may think that we know ourselves the best, <clears throat> but most certainly that's not the case. In fact, you may be the last person, you may be the least person to know yourself and um, your family and friends might have one day pointed out to you that uh, something about you that uh, and you might have went like, no way, I don't do such kind of thing. But deep down inside, uh, somehow you know they are right, right? And this selves that we are talking about, it encompasses all. The ego self, the self that you, are, you truly are, the real self, the ideal self, even the personas that we once in a while put forward for others that may be consciously or unconsciously intended. It's interesting how they all somehow... <clears throat> come together and make you the you that you are or the me that I am, right? So at times we can control these personas uh, and different selves that we have, but there are many at times when we are unable to do so. There are even times when we are unable to understand why we are being so rude to people around us, especially the, one who care, uh, the ones who cares for us the most, or even to random stranger who may be just an innocent peddler. We may justify our action and tell ourselves that they were being rude to us first. But many a times there is an unrest within our own self and we just don't know why. Sometimes we make ourselves busy, we tend to things and make ourselves forget. Uh, but when it comes back to us, that uneasiness, it comes back to us some other day, in some other form also. And we keep on running and running, not from others, but mostly from ourselves. In the process of which we at times end up seeking external motivation, a drive and a will to focus our attention on. So don't get me wrong, it's a very fair thing to do. Rather than getting worked up on feeling bad about something I did bad, at times it's easier to just let it go and make myself a cup of tea or coffee and immerse myself in a good book or a good movie, preferring to hide or mask or my feeling or even try to repress my feeling by going towards something that's pleasant, pleasant for me, right? So I think we've all been there. So, or as usually happen, we get busy with the happenings of the day and let things unfold on its own. But when nature has given us ample amount of time to be with our own self, by our own self during this lockdown period, especially, there's a tendency to being in a restless condition where we may torment ourselves with questions that we feel we necessarily aren't ready to answer. In this restlessness, we find our idleness somewhat of a disadvantage at times. So our life repeats a cycle each day and to get out of the boredom, there may be a few of us who tried new hobbies um, like baking a cake, which is great, and, or even, find, uh, even finding time for friends you haven't talked to in a while, which are really a positive way to cope. Or maybe you sleep the whole day and get up by the afternoon and then Netflix or play games uh, your day away. But through it all, at some point, there's a sense of what the hell am I doing here with my life, right? Or even uh, today was such a useless day. At, um, at times, our boredom gets the better of us and we feel as if we are the most useless piece of item ever. We curse and we displace our irritation and anger. Sometimes we just want to irritate others around us just because we are bored and irritated ourselves. And um, since we don't have an outlet the way we usually do before lockdown, it gets even worse. 
the days just keeps on going and going in cycle the same thing each day uh, what is there to expect from anything or anyone right even from yourself and at the core of our boredom which super specially seems uh, quite simple and neutral there is a lot that's actually going on inside you may notice that whenever you are bored you somehow automatically end up reaching for something maybe your phone food coffee drinks cigarettes the remote or maybe even your bed right and by the end of it there is a feeling of guilt that we haven't been productive enough that you ought to do something or you should have been doing something at the spice or shame for ourselves or how useless we have become an anger maybe for how useless everything has been so far a sadness maybe that seems to question if life even has a meaning anymore if anything you do matters at all or maybe a lot of criticism for yourself and the world at large so this brings in context the story that we told earlier of having a utilitarian perspective where the tree has to be cut down just because it's useless for you right so let's look at ourselves and ask ourselves have i been doing the same thing too so have you been cutting trees just because you deemed them useless when something does not work we we use easily say uh, i better get rid of it right so do we do the same thing with our relationship here's a question that i really want to ask you today do you do the same thing with yourself so do you always have to be productive in a world where perfectionism is a drive that is highly acclaimed for and maybe even sought after is it okay to be okay with things as simply as simply as they are let things just pass and go do you always need a solution for everything do you always need to know everything do you always have to work on being the best version of yourself believe me i am a victim of such a drive myself and at times i feel like if i don't do something useful or productive for the day it's like my day is wasted and by the end of the day i feel a sense of emptiness even and i have suffered much because of this and learned a huge lesson to it's a danger really when we continuously use the same thing again and again on ourselves we are not talking about enabling laziness or escapism we are here talking about allowing ourselves to be at ease with not being able to do what we want to do or what we think we should be doing so the next time you feel a surge of boredom because there is just nothing worthwhile to do a boredom that is knocking at you maybe you'll end up reaching for the fridge or your phone to watch a video or play a game on your phone or maybe you'll just go back to sleep or do whatever you may be doing but before you do any of that i want to request you to do one thing today uh, let's try to feel because uh, when you look at boredom boredom within us can be a form of anxiety it can be a form of sadness it can be a form of anticipation a restlessness an expectation for something that doesn't seem to be happening real soon and you're just so done with everything and you're like kind of giving up right and by the end of it you're left with self loading even in a world where society deem a person worthless if they are not useful or doing something with their life or their time i figure it's only natural for us to feel so so to be honest in most situation we don't know what we are feeling and it may confuse us and we may not even know why we are so bored when there's a lot of things to do at house or around the house and you may even be procrastinating on a lot of college work also or even office work so this here is one similarity between boredom and procrastination in that both of them somehow allow us to escape from something that we don't like so let's try one thing today i'm going to request you to do something so let's do a small self work which ideally is done for more than 5 minutes and in a more ideal setting this is actually a course work that needs time and effort so that one may be able to integrate integrate one's own shadow in a process known as shadow work 
but I am hoping that uh, this five minutes self work will help us in our current prevailing situations. For those of you who attended the session yesterday, I hope you remember what uh, Dr. Garima uh, said regarding how to do a proper breathing exercise, where you breathe in, when, where when you breathe in, you have to fill your belly with air and inflate as you breathe out. So keep this in mind and uh, let's begin. So sit yourself in a comfortable position and or find a comfortable position that you can hold for the five minutes or so that we are going to need. <clears throat> and if it's comfortable and okay for you to close your eyes, allow your eyes to be closed. And as you close your eyes, take a deep breath through your nose and out. Focus your mind, your attention on your body. Put your attention on the sensation of your body as your chair or whatever you are sitting on pushes against your body. And feel the difference between where the chair is pushing you and where it's not. Let's breathe in and out. Allowing this breathing sensation to be our focal point something we go back to for support. Breathe in and out. As you notice the difference in sensation on your body, allow your body to rest on the chair that you're sitting on. Feel the spots on your body where it meets the chair Feel your legs, feel your hands, feel your back, feel your neck, feel your face, feel your eyes, and feel your breath as it comes in and out of you. Allow yourself to rest for a moment. And slowly bring your attention to your mind. And be aware of the vast mental space in your mind. And if your attention gets drawn to something else, allow it to wander. We are not here to control or make judgment. We are here merely to observe. You don't have to stop it. It's okay to think about things. It's okay to let it flow. You don't have to try to change it. Relax and allow it to come to you. Be open to whatever random thoughts that may come and allow yourself the curiosity. Maybe it's a happy thought or a sad one or a frightening one or a thought that doesn't make any sense to you at all. Let it remain. And even if it transform and change, allow the transformation. As your mind wander, I want you to take a notice of how you are feeling. 
Maybe it's a subtle feeling or a strong one, or it can be in the form of a heaviness or a lightness on your chest. Allow yourself the emotion. And if it gets too much, bring your attention back to your bodily sensation and breathe in and out. Let's breathe in again and out. Letting yourself feel whatever you are feeling. Even if it's just a thought, allow yourself the thought. Knowing that it is possible and it is all right to be with that feeling or to be with that thought. Allow yourself to feel. It is okay to feel. And even if you're not feeling anything, it's okay to not feel and be numbed as well. And in this process, be aware that you are not your feeling and you are not your thoughts. They are merely a part of you. You are more than your feeling, more than the happiness in your life or the sadness that may envelop you. You are more than your anger. You are more than your frustration or the memories that may hurt you still. And you are definitely more than the situation that you are in. And just like your breath, they will come and go. And it is okay for you to embrace the feeling while it's there. You don't have to run or hide. It's okay to feel. And this time when we breathe out, let's breathe out through our mouth as if we are blowing candles out. Let's do it together for three times. And with that last exhale, slowly let it pass. And when you feel ready, you may open your eyes. I hope uh, the exercise helps to some extent because a lot of times uh, when we feel certain things, we don't really know or understand ourselves or emotion. Uh, we don't know exactly how we are supposed to react and in turn it irritates us or even frustrates us. So being present in the moment by being aware of our emotions and knowing what we are feeling and by being aware of where we are at present, this will actually help in being more content with where we are as an individual. So as a last point, uh, I would like to talk about the term compassion and remind each of us that it is ideal for us to be compassionate of others, but um, do not forget yourself in the process, be compassionate to yourself too. And the next time you feel bored and out of things to do, sit yourself down, take your time and help yourself understand why you are bored then maybe you won't be so hard on yourself later on after finishing a season of a show on Netflix in a day or two or playing games the whole day or finishing the, an ice cream or eating so much already for the day or just slumping in the bath the whole day because that may be just what you need or maybe you will come to a realization that you don't need to do that or maybe you don't need to do that to yourself. So, uh, and also the less 
we understand our feeling and our own self, the more we tend to be unconsciously judgmental of ourself or of our action, which may lead us to be rather hard on ourselves and others too as we tend to project our own feelings onto others. So when we get angry at ourselves, we become angry at others and we may even believe others to be angry at us when in reality it's just us who is angry. And when we find others frustrating, it may really be ourselves that we are frustrated against. And this may hamper our relationship with our loved ones for more than we care to admit. But when we do find and give time and space to ourselves to understand our feelings and emotions and be compassionate to ourselves, you will find that inspiration is everywhere, especially from within ourselves, even in the most trying of times. So I think, uh, thank you so much. And that will be all. I think, yeah, Garima, back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was actually quite a centering uh, experience for all of us because I think it's that part of the day where we have the pressure of being productive and doing something with our time. So I think you made us really comfortable with the idea of being okay with the feeling that we have and you know, pay attention to that feeling, allow the feeling to come, stay with it, think more about it. Think about why are we feeling this need to be productive? Why are we guilty about indulging ourselves once in a while? So I think this is something each one of us needed to hear. And also about compassion. You know, I don't think we are compassionate and kind towards ourselves as much yeah. as we are towards the others. So thank you so much. It was a very fruitful talk. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I would now, uh, you know, open the floor 